Future. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Bill O'Reilly. In the Miller Time segment tonight, hide the children and tell Al Gore, President Bush, Fred Thompson, and Mark Cuban to listen up. Mr. Miller joins us now from Los Angeles. He's a multimedia kind of guy. Cable on verses, radio, three hours a day. You know, your wife, your wife loves me because I got you out of the house permanently. You know what I'm talking about here, Miller? <laughs> yes, I do, Bill. She sends her compliments. She's been sending me notes saying, thank you, thank you for getting him out of the house. <laughs> All right, so Gore shows up to the White House on a Nobel uh, deal with Bush. Now, we, we, they wouldn't release any sound, Miller, which always makes me suspicious. Now, are you buying a little smiles here? What are you saying? Well, I know that the uh, left likes to think of George Bush as Chance the Gardener, Peter Sellers' character from the movie Being There, that he just stumbles through the world. But I, I tend to think of him more as Paul Newman's character, Henry Gondor from The Sting. Not only does he get to beat their brains in, they don't even realize that he's won. He has Gore over there after Gore stands in downtown Manhattan and screams about, he lied, he lied! And Bush has probably never even heard about it, or better yet, could care less what Al Gore thinks, and indeed goes out of his way to welcome Gore into the White House. It's like political jujitsu. He takes Gore's power and uses it against him. Bush wins. He owns these guys. All I ever think of when I think of Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, and Al Gore is Bush getting the veins in their neck to stick out, like they were dental floss. Bush, you never see the veins in his neck. He could care less. He just smiles and kind of ambles through it. He's going to ride off into the sunset. These guys got their hat handed to them. They didn't even realize it. All right, so you say that, that the more Al Gore and people like that uh, diminish Bush and the more he ignores it and just being a friendly kind of guy, he looks like a champ and they look like chumps. Exactly, Bill. Uh, Bush has... Uh, given him the least accolades he can, Gore can hate him, and it doesn't matter to Bush. He's just a gnat on his back. Okay. Fred Thompson and a little mad at Fox News because I guess some of our commentators, not on this program, by the way, um, have been tough on him and saying that he doesn't have the right stuff to be president. Our criticism uh, with the former senator was that his campaign uh, was very difficult to deal with. Now, that has changed in the last couple of weeks. Now, we have a... Uh, a relationship with them, we can get them on the phone, this and we're hoping that Thompson comes in shortly. But does Thompson have a point about Fox News uh, being mean to him? Well, here's the first thing. He could have a point about Fox News because I do think Fox News is fair and balanced. I think the left thinks that they came up with that Roger and you just to get under their skin. But it's the truth. If Fred Thompson deserves it, Guys like Krauthammer and Fred Barnes are going to take him out to the barn and give him a whipping. But the simple fact is, the reason they're after Barnes is because he's, or after uh, Thompson is because he's running a laconic campaign. To me, it was like when Rosie wanted to get out of the view. What does she have to say, or what does Fred have to say to get out of this? Now he's going to go after Fox News, for God's sakes. They're not <laughs> going after him because he's a conservative. They're going after him because it looks like a lazy campaign. What's he going to have to do next? Show up and take a photo with Hugo Chavez? He obviously wants out. He's got the dental plan from Law and Order. He wants to lay around the house and have the beautiful wife pick nits out of his back hair. Let's let him go. Send him home. I don't know how to respond to that last one. Here's my take on Thompson. He wants to be vice president, and he's got a shot at it. He's got a shot at it because if Giuliani gets it, Giuliani has to put a conservative on the second ticket. Um, Thompson is a, the best known, although Giuliani could go with Romney. Um, a Giuliani-Romney ticket, I think, would be strong. But I think Thompson wants to be VP. You know, because the VP, he can, you know, take it easy a little while. Uh, you don't see him for six, eight months. Dick Cheney, we have no idea where he is. Do you know where he is? Has he been on the Versus program with you? No, he has not been on there yet, although when we get into the pacemaker-changing competition, he is a decathlete there. He's the <laughs> Rafer Johnson of pacemaker-changing. So he's, he's got a strong but, uh, heart, though. The guy's been, how many heart attacks has he had, 72, and he's still walking around? This is a macho guy, Cheney. He walks through more heart attacks than Red Fox on Sanford and Son. It's not even a blip to him. All right. Now, you were right, and I have to give Miller credit when he's right, because he's often wrong. Um... You said when we talked about this stupid, vile, aw ignorant, awful movie, Redacted, 
that you weren't that upset about it because Americans weren't going to go to see it, and it's just a piece of garbage, and they were going to ignore it. That's exactly what happened. How did you know that, Miller? Well, I know it when I saw it in Variety, they were estimating that it was going to go straight to Betamax. I mean, that's how bad. Look, I saw an eight-second clip there. I thought it looked boring, okay? The fact is that Mark Cuban, and I didn't know this, Bill, I might have been right on that, but you were right on the fact that they've turned on him. I was down in Dallas a couple weeks ago with that Mike fellow, the DJ who was on yesterday, nice guy, yep. and we did a Q&A down there. And the people in Dallas are really off of Cuban right now. No, they I mean, he's in this, oh, he's in this weird place now, Bill, where he's a billionaire. So billionaires don't ever hear this. But I remember when I did Monday Night Football, there was a guy who wrote for um, the uh, USA Today named Rudy Martsky. He covered sports on the air. He was a complete moron. And yet everybody to his face told him what a good guy was and said, hey, Rudy. And then as soon as he walked out of sight, I'm telling you, everybody in the NFL would go, that guy's a complete moron. And I thought, what sort of Kafka novella is this guy's life? He doesn't know what anybody thinks of him. And that's where Cuban is right now. But I can tell him I was at a town hall with around 1,500 people, and they are angry at Cuban. Yeah. He's never going to hear that because he's rich. But I don't they, think, they well, are, I, think he, I think he hears it, uh, obviously, from this program, that, that he knows that Americans really, really uh, don't want any of this stuff. Hey, did you see any of our Afghan coverage, Dennis? Yeah, I wish, you would, I wish you would ask me. If you're going over there again, please give me a call. I'd like to go play uh, Raquel Welsh to your ski nose, Bob Hope, you know, next we're, time. We're thinking about doing that. Obviously, you know, things change very quickly. But So you're going to volunteer next time we go to go, right? If you go, Billy, I'll go with you. I, I don't have any contacts there, but if no, you're no, going no, well, over, just tell me. I'll go with you. We go on our own. We don't go in association. So I can get you. I can get Sinise to go, Gary Sinise to go. I'll go, but we need some women in here. We need, we got to get some women, you know, guys, guys, we got to, so well, we got to be thinking about that. I know, listen, time out. I know Kucinich's wife wants to get out of town, so we'll take her. <laughs> All right, Dennis Miller, everybody, there he is. Directly ahead, celebrities taking drugs.